So, yeah, apologies if the slides are slightly uh, banged together. Um, so, uh, first of all, I have a confession, and um, that's that I, I don't work in HTA really. I'm, I'm an infectious disease modeler and epidemiologist. But over the past few years, I've been working on a number of projects that are uh, along the lines of um, health economic modeling for uh, global health applications. And most of those have been using models that can be framed as decision trees. So at some point, I thought it would be good to try to standardize uh, approach across a number of projects and uh, working with uh, a number of people um, and uh, just you know, manage things in a, in a way that allowed a bit more interoperability and, and, and standardization. So of course, the great strength of R for things like that is packages, uh, but with packages, there's always the business of trying to learn how to use them, which personally, I find a bit of a pain by comparison with trying to figure out how to do the problem myself. Uh, and then there's also the issue that they may not quite do what you want or do what you want in the way that uh, you want it done. So uh, my solution to that kind of uh, thing was basically to try and uh, take matters into my own hand and, and, and uh, write a package that did things exactly the way I wanted. Um, and as I say, that was primarily uh, aimed uh, for, for my own benefit and for the benefit of those working with me. Uh, but may at this point be of slightly wider interest. Pete, uh, uh, interrupt. Pete, you've got two little windows that are open in front of you. Oh, okay, you see those as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure, I didn't normally use Zoom, so I don't know what to, okay. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so when I, um, yeah, when I first put this together, I was calling it HED tree, but um, everybody else seems to read that as head tree. So. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to argue anymore. Um, right, so the, the, the kind of workflow that I'm having in my mind here is something like this, where you're initially doing some conceptual modeling, working on uh, agreement and a representation of the pathways of care that patients experience. Then you have the task of representing that structure uh, in, a, in, a, in a tree within R uh, and agreeing a labeling. So there's this old joke that um, uh, naming things is one of the two uh, hard problems in computer science. So although it sounds trivial to come up with a naming, it does carry some logic with it with, because you're expecting that uh, things which are named the same are gonna uh, represent the same uh, quantity on the trees. Um, then one has to come up with some functions that will map uh, a label tree into something that will generate um, answers. Uh, and of course, there's going backwards and forwards over those steps to try and make sure that they're all working appropriately. Then there's uh, parameterization. Uh, and there I'm really thinking about coming up with values for the uh, labels uh, on the tree. Uh, everything uh, I'm talking about is really thinking about things from the context of probabilistic sensitivity analysis. So we're thinking about a range of uh, values that those uh, um, things can take based on probability distributions. And it may be that actually you're specifying probability distributions for underlying fundamental parameters, which will then uh, get mapped onto um, the labels that, that eventually sit on uh, on the tree. So, you know, this package is really aimed at those first six steps. Um, how you analyze the results that you get out uh, is completely up to you, which is one of the great strengths of R is in data analysis. So it basically frames this kind of problem as generating data for onward analysis. So what's actually in it? Uh, there's basically some functions to help with constructing trees and, and labeling their uh, structure um, and, and checking that it's the way you want. There's uh, functions to um, evaluate the trees on, on input data. And there's some functions to help manage parameterization and generation of input data, as well as some more recent things that I've been uh, working on, which again are probably a bit more niche to, the, uh, to, to, to my interests. In terms of design principles, I was really, you know, it's aimed to be minimal and, and flexible. As I've already mentioned, it is aimed at working on data rather than uh, you know, individual sets of input um, parameters. And it leaves the problem of analyzing the eventual results completely up to you. I should also say it leans heavily on the data.tree package, which is great for this sort of thing, which I introduced in, in after I gave a I talk when I first created it and somebody said, oh, well, hang on, you could use the data.tree package for some of this, couldn't you? Which indeed was a good uh, hint. So in terms of constructing trees, we've settled on um, working with uh, Word, uh, which isn't something I, I normally do, but it's widely used and people find it 
uh, accessible for um, editing and commenting on uh, trees using the, the smart art um, functionality. Uh, and so once you've agreed on a, um, a, a tree with um, collaborators, if you click on it, you actually get a textual representation of that tree as a, as a nested um, set of bullet points, which you can just copy and put in a text file. And it, it's a tab delimited um, uh, text file. Uh, <clears throat> so then you can, you can read that in using the um, a function in the head tree package, which will then make a tree object that corresponds to uh, that um, structure. If you're a, a nerd or geriatric or a geriatric nerd like me, then it may be of uh, interest to know that you can also manipulate uh, these things in a similar way using uh, org mode in Emacs. Then you've got the task of uh, labeling the tree. So that means going through, and this is a little bit tedious, but specifying what you want to call the probabilities um, and what you want to uh, call the costs or any other quantities that you're attaching to the tree. Notice on the right here that you can include simple calculations. So there's the one minus a case fatality ratio there. Uh, and you can also use functionality from the um, data.tree package to kind of sweep over the tree and pick out things uh, to be labeled automatically. So uh, I always include a, a check function, which is basically one on the leaves of the tree. And uh, you, can, um, you can use that to, to check for leaks. Here uh, on the second code block, I'm illustrating that if you use sensible naming conventions for your nodes, you can also introduce counters based on uh, text uh, matching for, for the, uh, amongst the node names. Then there's also a couple of functions that are um, helpful for merging, merging in subtrees. So here on the right, I'm, uh, I've got a, a, an out, a set of outcomes for uh, TB are treated or not treated and they're being merged onto a tree that uh, represents a diagnostic algorithm that either puts you on treatment or, or doesn't. So in terms of checking things, there's the print function from data.tree, which you can use to uh, uh, print to console along with uh, various quantities, but that only works really for small trees and small numbers of uh, things that you want to count over the tree. Um, there's a, a plotter uh, function which will uh, open up a web browser and let you kind of navigate around a, a tree. But again, that tends not to be easy to do in a, it's easy to miss stuff, on, uh, I find, on, on, a, on a big tree. So there's also a, a function that will dump the tree along with any um, other uh, uh, labels to a CSV file, which uh, is a bit easier to go through line by line and also easy to share back with um, collaborators who may not be uh, using R to have a look at. So what I've talked about so far in terms of our workflow to which this is meant to be uh, applicable is stuff around you know, agreeing a, um, a, a tree, labeling it uh, and inspecting it to see that that's the way you intended. Uh, and the next stuff is about um, uh, creating functions to evaluate things on trees. So again, and maybe this isn't quite the right place in the talk for this, but the approach here is to think, okay, we're gonna have input data, which is representing a cohort. And because it's a PSA, there are gonna be replicates because uh, you're doing this for uh, many samples uh, for the cohort. Um, there's gonna be a count. So the number of uh, the, the population size in each of these uh, strata, if you like. Um, and, uh, that count could be one. So you could think of the rows as representing individual uh, patients if you wanted to um, introduce that degree of um, heterogeneity. Uh, and then the population strata uh, or individual patients can have attributes, which again are sort of up to you what they are and how you um, allocate them in, in, in creating this uh, input data. So that's the, uh, that's the data. And a parameterization is somehow a way to uh, generate the label values that you see on the tree uh, and append those to that data. So they can, first of all, they're, they're going to be random. <laughs> and second of all, they can depend in arbitrarily complex ways on the uh, attributes. So for example, you might have some data you could use to do a regression that tells you what outcome probabilities uh, look like for um, people of given ages, et cetera, et cetera, to really go down to the individual le uh, level 
uh, approach and uh, generate label values based on uh, tools like that. But again, that stage is, is not part of the package. That's completely up to you how you want to encode the dependence of uh, tree um, labels on uh, attributes. So once you have a, a label tree, you want a, a function or a set of functions which are going to append the answers, if you like, to the mean number of deaths uh, over the tree in, in this case. And, and that's where uh, the head tree package is helping because it, um, it, 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 it uses a function factory to basically create functions that will do that for each of the uh, quantities that you've attached to nodes. So here I'm uh, for each tree uh, standard of care and intervention, I'm generating uh, some functions for checking, for checking costs, lives, deaths. And if you look at what the output is, it's a named list with a, with a, a naming convention for how the function names relate to the uh, variable names. Uh, and you can apply those functions to input data. And as long as the functions are going to find in your input data all of the uh, labels on the tree, then um, they, they will uh, generate answers. Uh, here's an example, sorry, this is not very informative probably, but just you know what you're wanting with that check function is that you always get one to show that for every one, um, you know, for every one unit of probability coming in, you get one unit coming out across all of the uh, leads, um, which is why it's a useful thing to create. So that was stuff around um, applying uh, functions to the uh, tree. And then I said that there's some also some stuff around uh, parameterization, handling input uh, data and uh, helping around PSAs. So uh, the one of the main things here is uh, a syntax for input, dealing with input tables. The, um, the idea of which is basically to save you the job of writing a separate uh, you know, table for a report uh, for how your, uh, what your parameters, your fundamental parameters were and how the distributions characterizing them uh, uh, were specified. So uh, here you, there's a, a column that's the name of the parameter. Uh, there's a column with a syntax for distributions. So you know, log normal distributions, beta distributions, not a distribution here, um, multivariate normal, and then a description and a source, which are ignored by head tree, but are, are useful to users. There's also a couple of functions which I, I'm aware must surely exist in other R packages for uh, helping specify those uh, distributions based on um, you know, data in, in literature and so on. So if you if you read in that um, uh, CSV file as a, as a data frame, you can pass it and it will create a, a parameter object. You can also, when you do that, uh, ask it to generate some test output, which I'll uh, walk you through. So the parameter object will basically again be a, a list and for each, um, it's a named list with the names of the parameters and each uh, parameter, if it's re representing a distribution, will include the values and the name and so on, but it will also generate um, a, a random number generator for that uh, parameter and a quantile function, the quantile function really being for working with Latin hypercube sampling. Um, if you want it to dump out test output, then in the file, in the, in the directory you specify, it will spit out uh, distributions associated with the parameters so that you can kind of sanity check them by eye, as well as a, a CSV file that lets you look at the kind of midpoints and uh, ranges. So once you've got a, a parameter object uh, like this top row here, there's also a function called make PSA, which will then turn those into a, um, a data uh, uh, dot table object that you can apply functions to. Here, I've actually by hand written a kind of wrapper that will pick out the uh, uh, functions for, for the right um, arm and apply all of them uh, at once, but I might automate some of that in, in due course. So a, a couple more recent things. Well, actually, I got started thinking about stuff like this in the first place uh, a few years ago when uh, I was working on a, a user-friendly um, uh, model that, so it was really in the context of infectious disease transmission again, and diagnostic algorithms, and wishing to simplify away the tree aspect of the algorithm to uh, incorporate the uh, costs and um, effects uh, within a transmission model. Um, but 
it occurred to me that actually you don't need to have these approximations necessarily if you can get the trees to spit out uh, the ODEs automatically. So uh, I've written some code to do that. So if you if you assign dwell times to each of the states, it will also generate code for use in uh, ODE models uh, that allow you to include the dynamics through those um, uh, uh, nodes on the tree, treating them as compartments in a, um, a system dynamics model. The other thing that um, I've been doing lately is working on um, uh, Bayesian inference uh, in relation to this. So uh, for, for one study I'm working on, the um, we're going to get count data for, uh, for the tree, basically. So account for each leaf, which means that you get to reconstruct the whole history. Uh, and we'd like to condition the um, distributions on that data. So what we're doing is using head tree to generate code snippets that we can uh, use in STAM, which is a probabilistic programming language that integrates well with R, and, and basically turn, the, think of the tree as specifying a multinomial regression. So, um, and then once you've uh, applied that um, regression to the uh, data, it basically generates a new set of um, in, input PSA data that's re representing the posterior condition and conditioned on the trial data. Uh, and you just apply uh, the, the model functions to that in, in the same way that you would uh, input data that would otherwise represent priors. Um, so in, in conclusion then, I mean, this, this is fairly minimal package with helpful, helper functions around constructing trees um, and for handling um, input parameters and uh, PSAs in relation to those. Um, and really the, the core thing that it does is spit out functions uh, automatically that will calculate uh, means of um, counters or other values that you've attached to nodes of the tree. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a couple of things that I'm sort of um, working on a little bit at the moment around uh, ODE, automatic ODE code and uh, inference. And, you know, I said at the start, this is really, I, I did this for my own convenience rather than for other people, but um, the, you know, it's getting to the stage where perhaps it would be of um, interest to other people. Uh, and so beyond some little, you know, things on my to-do list that uh, I can see would help and, and maturing some of the stuff that's perhaps a bit more niche, but um, uh, of interest to me, I think a lot of what one might do on this is, you know, first of all, improve the documentation and help, which is out of date and incomplete, uh, and potentially, you know, write up a uh, a guide or, or paper to uh, help other people know how to use that. But of course, there may not be any <laughs> interest in that at all if there's already packages that do this or people have their own approaches that they uh, prefer, which is absolutely fine. Uh, but if there is you know, interest in that, then uh, I'm happy to uh, put some work into it, but equally would uh, value um, contributions or collaborations around uh, any of the elements there, you know, from the code development through to the uh, examples and applications side of it through to the uh, presenting it in a way that makes it um, useful to the audience uh, that might find it useful, uh, of which I'm probably not the best um, uh, representative. All right, so hopefully we're about on time from that. Thanks very much, Peter. It's wonderful. And um, can you turn your speaker down, down while, I'm, while I'm sharing a bit of feedback? feedback. Yeah. Um, thanks very much. So just we have time for a few questions. Anyway, so just you're saying um, regarding, you know, would there be interest in this? One of the responses in the chat is huge interest in capitals. Uh, so uh, I think uh, no need to be so self-deprecating about this. I think it, it's going to be useful for others. Uh, Howard uh, has a has a question. It might link in a little bit with some of the Bayesian analysis that you mentioned at the end. Oh yeah, Pete. Um, I just noticed when you were saying things you've done, where you're planning to, where you've just done, you're simulating patient numbers, um, like to see what would happen to them. That sounds really well suited to doing expected value of sample information calculations. Have you thought about integrating that? Uh, not particularly. Uh, but that's again just because I, I'm driving this based on the things that I've, I've got a need to do, yeah. uh, and I haven't had a need to do that. So yeah, I wrote I wrote something that um, would obviously the, the core business of what this does is to um, calculate mean quantities across trees. 
But because of that trial application I mentioned, I also wrote a simulator that would consider, you know, fixed number of patients and, and stochastically simulate them through the, the tree. I, I mean, some of the other things that were a bit on my uh, to-do list in that direction were potentially to integrate with some of the approaches to um, sensitivity analysis along the lines of uh, SAVI, uh, so that, you know, for example, you could generate um, like SOBOL type sensitivity analyses without having to actually do those runs based on existing um, PSA data. So that's the kind of thing I had in mind. I mean, yeah, full stop. But yeah, if you've got a good idea for something that people find interesting that's worth putting in, I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, Pete, you've also really piqued the interest of Mark Clemens. I don't know if Mark is able to unmute himself and just ask this question directly. I guess he really could, sorry. Um, thank you, that was a great presentation. Um, have you thought about doing variance estimation for the ODEs? The, the reason I'm asking is that um, I uh, think the RSTPM2 package has got a mark of MSM function, which uses ODEs, um, which sounds very s similar to, um, to, to what you did in your 2018 paper. Um, and I think that you can actually um, uh, calculate the, the variances by adding on to the ODEs. I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean, but uh, I'll, I'll drop you an email perhaps if, if it's not a, a one uh, uh, one sentence explanation. I think that'd be great. Um, and, and again, a very nice presentation. Thanks. Super. Okay. So uh, thanks very much, Pete. I think we better finish there because um, I've been totally delinquent in time uh, regarding the chairing of the session. I always think it's a terrible thing when I see it in other chairs and you know, I've done it myself. Okay, so can we try and resume at 10.25 uh, for the, um, uh, the, the next uh, set of uh, uh, presenters? Uh, so we'll just take a short break and we'll see everybody back at 10.25. Uh,